Hi. Now in this part we've got to show that x squared plus x plus 1 is greater than 0 for all values of x. And there's two ways that uh, spring to mind and one of them is by looking at completing the square. And if you're not familiar with completing the square just go on my website look under completing the square and you should be able to see some tutorials on it. Okay, so let's uh, take uh, x squared plus x plus 1. We'll just write that down as x squared plus x plus 1. And we won't make any assumptions that it's greater than 0. We've got to show that it's greater than 0. So what we're going to do is convert this to another form then by completing the square. And if you're familiar with this, all we do is we have a bracket which is squared and we put in the first term here x so that will give us the x squared and then we halve the coefficient of x halve the number in front of the x well there's a plus one here so if we were to halve that we would get a half now if we were to square this out this doesn't give us x squared plus x plus one as you'll see here we'll just do it off the side here if we took x plus a half and multiplied it by another x plus a half what we get is something similar to this we would get x times x which is x squared and then we would get x times a half which is a half x and we'd also have plus another half x which makes one x so we get our plus x there but then we have half times a half which is a quarter so you can see we don't quite get x squared plus x plus 1. We end up with x squared plus x plus a quarter. So what do I need to add to that quarter to bring it up to 1? Well it's clearly got to be another 3 quarters. So we just need to add 3 quarters. So now we have that this is identical to this. It gives the same answer. And it's quite clear to see I hope that uh, we've now got two terms and this is clearly going to be greater than zero. And why is that? Well, the first term is squared and if you square anything it's always going to be positive. And then you're adding it to another positive term so a positive term plus a positive term is always going to give you a positive term for all values of x. So rather than just write greater than zero, I think I'm going to just clarify that by saying that uh, it's greater than zero since okay, we add two positive terms. Okay, we'll just put that in. Now I did say that there was two ways that sprung to mind. One was completing the square. The other's much longer though and uh, we'll just run through it anyway and that is by trying to think about max and min values. What I'm going to do is let y equal x squared plus x plus 1. So if I was just to say let y equal x squared plus x plus 1 what I'm going to do is differentiate this to get the gradient at any point on the curve and if we do that in the usual way you'll get 2x for the first term and plus 1 for the next term. And what I'd want to do is find out where the gradient was 0 if there was any stationary point. So I'd just say at stationary points we'll put stat for short and points like that, we know that the gradient dy by dx would have to equal 0. So therefore we'd have 2x plus 1 which would equal 0 and if we solve this for x by subtracting 1 from both sides we'd end up with 2x equals minus 1 and then divide by 2 we'd end up with x equals minus a half. And what would the corresponding y value be for this? Okay. Well, we can find that out by substituting, obviously, x equals minus a half into the equation up here. So we can say that when x equals minus a half, what do we get for y? Well, y would equal 
minus a half squared which is going to be a quarter and then we've got at minus a half which is going to be minus a quarter and add one you're going to get three quarters so the corresponding value of y is going to be three quarters but the problem is okay we've got a graph here say of our quadratic let's just draw it in here there's a stationary point at minus a half three quarters so if we go minus a half three quarters we've got a stationary point here say now okay you should know that this is a parabola a u-shaped parabola and it goes something like this through the stationary point but really that's because we know that x squared is a u-shape it's not a very good mathematical uh, way of explaining this though you've got to show that this point is a minimum and we can do that by doing say the second differential okay and testing what kind of sign we get so if we double differentiate d2y over dx squared if we differentiate this we get just simply 2 and that value is greater than 0 so we can say that it's greater than 0 and so therefore this tells us that our stationary point we'll just put that okay hopefully you're familiar with this that if d2y by dx squared is greater than 0 it tells us our stationary point is a minimum okay so we now know that our graph would look something like this rather than just saying oh because it's an x squared curve it must be this shape so what does this show it shows us that all our y values are positive for any value of x so it is greater than zero this expression x squared plus x plus one must be greater than zero so we just wind this up by saying that therefore x squared plus x plus 1 must be greater than 0 for all x and I hope you can see then that this method here is not what I would personally prefer but it's going to work it's far longer than the completing the square method anyway I hope that gives you some idea of how to uh, approach this part of the problem